my name is Lindsay Thurston. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire design process of my recent family room makeover. I actually just finished it today, just filmed the reveal footage before sitting down to talk about it with you right now, and I cannot wait for you to see the incredible results. This makeover includes completely swapping out furniture from other rooms in my home, adding new area rugs to anchor a space, how to hang a gallery wall around a television to create a focal point, DIY plant pedestals that Travis and I built ourselves, and overall room styling to create a cozy and calm space that we can relax and enjoy. Before we get into the full room makeover, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you won't miss any of my future videos. I post new home decor videos every single Wednesday with my best shopping tips, DIY projects, room makeovers, and more, and you're not gonna want to miss it. For more home decor inspiration, room makeovers in progress, and other day-to-day -day happenings, you can find me on Instagram at Lindsay Living. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook under Lindsay Living as well. All right, let's get into it. The first step for any room makeover is taking stock of what's currently in the space. Taking stock of the furniture, I really didn't see much that I wanted to keep in the room. A lot of the objects that were in this space are either old, in disrepair, stuff that we just used because we had it and didn't quite have the money yet to replace it. And also the cornerstone of this room to start with was a giant navy blue sectional sofa from Ikea. It was actually gifted to Travis from a firefighter buddy who was moving and didn't have space for it anymore. So Travis actually got it for free for his last apartment. Even though we were just dating at the time, I remember how sweet he was asking what I thought about it. And honestly, for a free piece of furniture, it did us well for a long time. It was super convenient to just have a big comfy couch that the two of us and our two golden retrievers could all snuggle on. Honestly though, that got old really fast, especially any time we had guests come over. It was such a pain in the tush to have to vacuum that piece of furniture and all of our white dog hair just stuck to it like glue. I was so excited when we got a new sofa for our living room. Today, we received our new sofa from Article. It's still in the box, can't wait to set it up. Oh, so many exciting things are happening. Once we get the new sofa into the living room space, the white sofa that's currently in there is going to relocate to our family room. That meant that we could swap out the sectional, which we are getting rid of, and then move our sofa that was in the living room into the family room. Also, once we rearranged the furniture in our living room, we ended up relocating the media console from the living room also to the family room. So a lot of furniture moved from another room. It wasn't purchased new for this makeover. We decided to put our dollar on a new sofa for the focal point of our house, the living room. That left this white slip covered cozy overstuffed sofa for the coziest room in our house, the family room. Now that I've decided what furniture to keep, it's time to swap some things around and bring some new things into this room. So we got rid of the sectional sofa. We got rid of the old school kind of chipping cube storage units that were holding up the TV. Got rid of those things entirely. This is what the space looks like right now. As you can see, we brought that big white sofa in. These are my beautiful Studio McGee Linwood Cube Ottomans. I was able to get them in the ticking stripe and there's two of them. Here's the other one. We've been loving using these as foot rests in here because this is definitely a more cozy space. Don't mind my dust bunnies. Those will be getting clean very soon. I was also able to add this darling little basket. This one's from the Project 62 line at Target. One of my favorite lines for affordable mid-century home pieces. This one's called just storage basket $24.99 and this is a great spot to hold dog toys. Get those out of the way but make sure they're easy for the puppies to find. I've got a tea we mounted it on the wall. It's looking so good. It's on a flexible arm mount so we can easily turn it to view in the kitchen, which is this way, or from the sofa, which is this way, or from the dining nook, which is this way. Once we got the other sofa, the white sofa and the media cabinet from, it's the Besta series from Ikea. Once we got that into the room, it completely changed the space. I had a hanging pendant light in that corner and I decided to switch it 
it out from a more mid-century shade to a woven shade, also from Ikea. It just works better in the space. And I think I'll end up reusing that mid-century pendant light. The woven shade adds so much more great texture and just natural fiber into this room. The next up was getting a new area rug. And I thought long and hard about how to layer something in that would keep the room light, bright, and calm while adding texture and possibly a little bit of pattern without being overwhelming. I was overjoyed to find this vintage style Turkish rug on Etsy. I'm in the middle of working on my family room makeover and this is going to be a huge centerpiece to the room, adding a lot of color layered texture. If you watch my previous home decor shopping haul video, I'll link that here. I shared that I was able to score this amazing vintage style Turkish rug on Etsy from the seller Turkish Rug Kingdom. I'll link them and all the other products I can below so you can use them if you want to in an upcoming makeover in your space. Once I found this rug, oh, it had these beautiful neutral beige tones, a little bit of a yellow hint on some of it, some blue moments spread out but not overwhelming. It really called to some of the other blue items that I gathered from the Studio McGee collaboration with Target. rug and old rug pad are finally out of the room. I vacuumed the whole area, taken out the definitely stained and needing to be replaced doormat. I'm going to be replacing that soon. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay down the new rug pad. If you're new to home decor, you might be wondering if I'm already spending hundreds of dollars on the rug, why do I need a rug pad? Well, here's the reason. A rug pad does so much to extend the lifetime of your rug and your floor. The first step is getting something that is slightly smaller than your area rug. I found this one, it's called the Barring, and this one is straight from Ikea. They actually suggest this one to you when you buy the jute rug that I purchased. And then this one actually has an anti-slip grip on it, so it's going to help the rug stay in place. Plus, you don't want a rug, number one, sliding around because it doesn't feel secure under your feet, but also you don't want it sliding around and pressing like any dirt or like grime or rocks or you know anything that can get into your home it does get underneath your rug and so if your rug is sliding around you are scratching your floors most likely well here it is my jute rug in the family room. You guys, it is so fun to make these dreams a reality. I can't tell you how long I have dreamed about putting a jute rug in here, and I am so happy with it. It's absolutely stunning. If you are looking for an affordable jute rug for your home, natural fiber, absolutely stunning, sizable, this rug is almost seven by 10, and it was only $129. That is a crazy price, especially for this level of quality. Now, a couple things I want to let you know. I struggled with that rug pad, but now that it's on the floor, it is so sturdy. It's, I know I just put it down on the clean floor, but I'm really, really happy about it. And worst case scenario, in a year, if it doesn't really seem to be holding still anymore, I can just buy a new one. It was $14.99, so loving that. This rug is the Low Halls Jute Rug from Ikea. Highly recommend. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm loving the colors, especially with the jute. Look how these look together, you guys. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, there's a handwritten note in here. They threw in a little coin purse. when you realize your dreams for your home. I am overjoyed right now, I can't even handle it. <laughs> it really just all came together super well and I have to credit the rugs for making this space feel so cozy, for adding texture, and really for uniting the color story in this space. Then, <laughs> hi, Kelly's come to say hello. Hi, puppy. 
Hi, baby. The next step was hanging a gallery wall around the television. Now, the reason I decided to do this was because the room didn't really have a clear focal point. And so to create one, hanging a gallery wall instantly grabs your attention when you walk in the room. The next design challenge that I need to tackle in this room is the wall around the television. Now, this is a family room. It's right off the kitchen. And we watch TV in here pretty much every single day. Mounting it on the wall has been a great choice. I always Say mounting a TV on the wall is pretty much the only way to go because honestly it frees up horizontal surface space for a little more styling or even just a little empty space, a spot for your eye to rest around a room. I've chosen to do a little books and plants and beads display. Over here we have our record player or turntable. The big challenge here is how do you make a wall beautiful when you already have a TV on it and just a bunch of empty space? Do you leave it blank or do you try to add some art? This can be really tricky. I generally opt for one or the other. I generally opt for no art or fill the wall. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and fill the wall. I've got a bunch of pieces I've been gathering, mostly neutrals, a couple pops of color to hang a gallery wall. And I'm gonna show you how I use butcher paper and painter's tape and some basic supplies to make a plan, arrange my art before I put any holes in the wall and hope that it all turns out the way that I want and that I can hopefully hang this gallery wall one time. <laughs> Probably famous last words, but we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead now and take each one of these pieces of art. I actually painted this one. This is a portrait of our dog Harbor. I guess I'm going to have to do a portrait of Kelly at some point so she doesn't feel left out. All the pieces of art that I'll be using for this gallery wall are in a neutral color palette with a couple pops of color. And so I also included some other paintings of beaches that I did in a previous DIY video. I'll link that here in the cards, but that also includes some of these little seascapes that I did watercolors and I actually did a little DIY thrift flip on these frames. I'm also including some fun pieces that I've purchased, including a couple pieces like this from the Studio McGee collaboration with Target. I really like how neutral this art is and I love the light wood frame. I think it's going to work really nicely in here without adding too much contrast. And then the big pop of color that I'll be adding is one of my favorite pieces. This one is of aspen trees. It's actually a letterpress, or I'm sorry, it's a nine color linoleum block print. Don't forget to mark what each one is because as soon as you cut them out, you're going to forget. abstract on this side. I like it over there. I put the second largest piece that beach scene up here on this side to balance things out. So really, if you think about it, when you include the television in this lineup, the three largest pieces are this abstract, which is coming untaped, the TV, which we can put art on when we're not watching a TV show and we have guests, and then this larger piece. After that, I had to layer in the smaller pieces. Two of them have a lot of color. Three are 
part of a series and so I don't want them all lined up in a row, which is my current problem. So this situation is not working. So that's where the playing around comes into place. Now I can give you my best advice for gallery wall, but ultimately the best judge is how you feel when you look at it. All right, I think I might have gotten this plan to a place that I like. looking for a dog, highly recommend Golden Retriever. They are the sweetest little companion dogs. The next big project was figuring out how to plug up the holes on either side of my sofa. Because the sofa is overstuffed, it's very large, it's very deep and cozy, it keeps these open spaces on either side of the sofa um, a little awkward and giant and cube shaped. So I had to really get creative with how to fill that space. Now the first one was a side table. I I actually DIY'd from a thrift store find. I found this beautiful Pottery Barn rattan storage ottoman at my local Goodwill store for only $15.99. I was able to completely clean it, repaint it, and totally give it a new life. Plus it adds a lot of needed contrast to that side of the room. With a white sofa and white curtains, I really needed something that was a darker, more grounding color. And I really love how this turned out. If you didn't see that DIY video, I'll go ahead and link it for you so that you can go back and watch those projects. The other side of the sofa created another unique design dilemma and I really had to get creative to fill this space. My first thought was to use a ladder shelf in that area to fill the space and give me some more styling potential, some more flat surfaces to add some books or some decor items. But the more that I looked into it, adding that piece of furniture just didn't really feel like a necessity. It just felt like I was putting it there to put it there and that it wasn't really going to be accessible or usable or even really fill the space that well honestly. Ladder shelves don't come out that deep from the wall and usually they look really good in small spaces. This is a small space but it just didn't feel like it was going to be quite right especially when the media console is right next to it like kitty corner next to it. So then I went to I should break this up between this neutral sofa this neutral media cabinet and put some plants in there some really exciting plants. So Travis actually sourced this beautiful Norfolk pine. It's three feet tall. I added a second plant there and I just knew that they were too, they were just kind of lost being positioned on the floor. It just felt like a real miss and I knew there was some great potential here to elevate these items. Plus I had an idea to cover up all the cords in that space. So we actually went over to visit Travis's family. They have a huge wood shop, tons of spare wood, and we were able to put together this DIY completely free using supplies that they let us have. We started this DIY with a piece of scrap plywood found in Travis's family wood shop. We used a miter saw and table saw to cut 45 degree angles on all the edges of each board. We measured our square around 11 and 3 quarter inches on all sides to create the perfect cube shape just under one foot tall. And we used Elmer's wood glue to glue the pieces together with the bottom open. We also used finishing nails to make sure that everything was firmly attached. Wood filler to fill up any problem seams or edges. We were being a little bit cautious. We did this again with a two foot tall version. These were incredibly simple to create and made a huge impact once in place in that awkward corner in my family room. Check it out. We created one that was one foot tall and a second that was two feet tall. And I was able to layer them into this corner to create a more elevated secondary focal point on that side of the room. They are freshly painted. We did two coats of paint after one coat of primer and they're dry and ready. And Kelly's checking them out. I'm gonna go ahead and place them in this corner. These plants are so gorgeous. I really didn't want them to be buried behind or down low. It's time to get these 
in place and see how everything looks. Raising them up not only made those plants more of a focal point, they also did wonders to hide the cords behind them. These plant pedestals were totally free and they did so much to elevate this corner, fill the space, and just add a little beautiful decor moment in a corner that was previously awkward and confusing. The last big project for this makeover is all the finishing touches. Styling included a lot of different accessory pieces that I gathered from around my home or purchased for this makeover. First, I gathered a bunch of different books that I could layer in to a little decor moment on the media console. Next was gathering up plants that we either had in other rooms or purchased for this makeover. I'm so in love with this Norfolk pine. It's going to be so much fun to decorate in the winter holiday months. We also layered in a beautiful monstera on the coffee table, English ivy on the coffee table, a prayer plant that dramatically cascades down the side of the media console. No space in my home is ever complete without a little or a lot of plant life. I gathered a ton of great pillows from a variety of sources. Several of my favorites came from the Studio McGee for Target collaboration. I was also able to source some great neutral pillows with great texture from Home Goods to finish my collection. Throw blankets always add a little bit more cozy factor, and I'm so excited to add this beautiful blanket ladder to this room. It adds a little bit more height to that awkward corner space behind those pedestals and plants, and it gives me a great way to store blankets when I don't really need them. I don't have to leave the beautiful knit blanket that I inherited from my grandfather out on the sofa all the time. Instead, I love using it as a decor piece on this blanket ladder. I think it adds some beautiful neutral texture and height to the room. I actually found this blanket ladder in Oprah magazine from this month. I was so excited to see it because I was actually in the market for a blanket ladder for this makeover and I was having a very hard time finding any any pieces that I liked on Amazon. This one came from Amazon. In Oprah Magazine, they listed it as $99, but when I searched for it on Amazon, I was actually able to score it for $60. So I'll link it down below in case you wanna use it. Now that the styling's all done, I think it's time for you to see the final before and after. Here's the reveal.
so overjoyed with how this room makeover came out. Looking at the before and after, it really shows me how much work went into this room and how much money saving tricks I was able to use to make this room feel so upscale with such little money. Room makeovers like this are incredibly satisfying because so much work goes into planning them, purchasing for them, gathering and sticking to my inspiration. And in the end, it's so exciting to see the entire vision come together. I don't expect you to recreate this room makeover in your own house, but I sure hope that you found some inspiration to try something new in your space. For more home decor advice, room makeovers and more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get one of those friendly little phone reminders every time I post a new video. If you'd like some more home decor advice, room makeover, pictures, DIY pictures, and more, don't forget to check me out over on Instagram. You can find me at Lindsay Living. Until next time, I challenge you to make one meaningful change in your space this week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, my friends.